Can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect. Good afternoon, everyone. We will just right now start our lunch break meeting, uh, which is created and hosted by Working Group Public Services, by chairs of our Working Group City of Vienna and City of Nantes Na Metropole. Uh, Daniela and Frédéric are today with us. Uh, welcome, Daniela. Welcome, Frédéric. Welcome, everybody. Hello, everyone. Uh, we uh, are quite a small group related to our meeting, which uh, is registered 25 participants. So the basic rule of the lunch break debate is, first of all, be active. You can eat in the meantime, of course, and also try to also interact as much as possible with us and also share your experience. The lunch break will be recorded uh, when you are not taking the floor. If you could mute yourself, that would really, really help us to eliminate the background noise. If you have any questions, questions, you can raise your hands via the Teams or you can also put it in the chat box. Uh, during our meeting, we'll also try to use an interactive methods of write, the writing and using the Jumbo, which is the whiteboard and the Slido. Instructions will be on slides or in the chat box, so please also keep an open eye on the, uh, on the chat box and also try play this game together with us today. So now, uh, what is the agenda for the lunch? Uh, it will be the welcome and presentation of the working group program by our working group chairs. Then we'll have the presentation of uh, updates related to the digitalization of public services uh, by Nantes and Vienna. Later on, we will ask you to contribute to share your experiences based on the questions that we also shared with you ahead of our meeting. Later on, we'll have the pleasure to learn more about the uh, user-centered project, which is uh, led by EuroCities. And of course, we will wrap it up with a strong espresso of content and conclusions by Frédéric, uh, our working group chair. And now I will um, give the floor to uh, Daniela. Daniela, the floor is yours. Yeah, um, good afternoon to everyone. Um, I'm really happy you are joining our lunch break on the digitalization of public services. Uh, my name is Daniela Freuhofer and I'm working for the city of Vienna and I'm one of the co-chairs of the public working uh, service group. Um, I'm working um, in the Department of European Affairs in the city of Vienna and there in the area of European strategies and public services. Yes, um, the COVID-19 crisis has shown that uh, the provision of high quality public services by cities is more important than ever. And um, the formal working group of public procurement and public um, services is now split into two working groups, public services and public uh, procurement again. Um, this allows us to focus more on our core topics. And we also launched a survey um, to our members, to you, um, to give up some feedback and um, information about your um, priorities. And I would like to um, share with you now our objectives of the uh, working group on public services. Well, uh, we would like to have, um, we are planning to have an exchange uh, with you on new approaches of public services, for example, re-municipalization. And we have already organized um, a city dialogue on the topic uh, last October, which was really interesting. Um, for a next step, we would like um, also to share with our members and you uh, best, best practices on uh, health issues, uh, social issues, based efficiency and in the field of public services. Of course, digitalization is also a very important um, topic and therefore we have our first event uh, today on um, the, the digitalization of public services. And we also think that it is necessary to have a good European uh, framework on the condition for the um, financing of public services and public infrastructure, because we need a legal um, certainty for our cities and regions. 
And also um, we try to lobby for the simplification of state aid rules for public services. And I can give you just a little update on this that the European Commission has uh, opened a public consultation on um, the uh, health and social issues. And this was during um, 2019. And this consultation is um, already finished. And um, the Commission is at the moment uh, still evaluating um, the results of this consultation. And we have at the moment to wait um, the further steps uh, from the European Commission. And I hope that we can give you some updates and information in one of our next um, working group sessions. Yes, um, how would we like to achieve this, um, this objective, as I mentioned, by um, evaluating could, um, uh, yeah, um, by uh, contributing on the ongoing SGI packaging follow-up on alleviation measures, as I mentioned, and of course organizing um, some, some activities with other working groups like the Economic Development Forum or Social Social Forum, uh, Mobility and Environment for sure, and uh, the Long Term Investment Group. Yes, um, now I would like to give the floor to Frederick, who will inform you about the next steps and actions um, of our working group in public services. Thanks a lot, uh, Thank Daniela. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm very glad to meet you in some of some ways online. This is the first time that I'm uh, co-chairing this working group public services. My name is Frederick Amion. I'm uh, from the city of North and its metropolis area. Uh, I work in the European Affairs Unit and I'm mainly following some uh, matters like social affairs and public services and public procurement and I'm very glad to, to be with you today. Uh, regarding our proposal for the working group activities, we uh, are uh, trying to wrap up in three main points that we are submitting to you today to, to discuss and see where are your main interests on. The first one will be trying to, to deepen the cooperation with the working group long-term investment from the Economic Development Forum in focusing on the financing of the public services, especially in the context of the Stability Growth Pact, which is still evolving and uh, which will be like a, a key part for the recovery for public services to, to take a major place. Uh, the second point will be the pass forward the pledges. Uh, so, so the European pillar social rights have those 20 principles that you probably all know about, but the principle 20 is uh, dedicated to the access to essential services, which is mainly uh, covered by public services. So um, it, there is a campaign uh, led by Eurocities, so you probably all uh, know that. And very few cities so far have pledged on this principle 20 uh, and verse. Lyon in France, recently Vienna, and not being on the process to do it as well. So we thought it would be like quite of the opportunity to discuss this together. What are the challenges regarding this principle 20? Maybe trying to come to invite someone from the commission to, to tell us more about the expectations they might have on this principle 20 and trying maybe to mobilize other cities to pledge on this principle 20. And it would be a good opportunity to, to uh, improve the cooperation with the staff as well. Uh, the third point will be to continue the exchange on digitalization of public services. Obviously, today is a launch event, trying to, to get an insight of where are the, the challenges and the interests for the different members of this working group. And in order to make it in a very democratic way, we would like to, to give you the opportunity to, to give us some feedback about those three proposals. Obviously, if any one of you have another ID, uh, feel free to take the floor and ask for, for, for uh, ask to, to ask the floor, sorry. And if not, we can go with the Slido and you can, if for those who does not know exactly how it works, you can just go on slido.com and enter the number that you can see on the screen and you will have the possibility to, to vote on the three uh, proposals and see where we should focus. If I forget something, Alexandra, please do not hesitate to jump in. <laughs> All perfectly fine. And now uh, we will give the floor to Claire and uh, Frédéric will share the screen. Okay. Uh, 
Sure, just a minute, then please. I'm going to share the screen. Is it working or not? It will soon, I think. Okay, it's okay. Yes. Okay, so I'm just going to give us a little introduction from uh, a note before Claire has the floor. So to, today, my colleague uh, Claire Sachel was going to speak in the next uh, coming minutes. We'll focus on the data charter that Norm developed, and I'm just going to wrap up quickly why it's so important in the context of digitalization of public services. Obviously, we all know that the digitalization of public services require a, a huge amount of storage for, of data, of personal information, and it's a necessary condition for the transformation of uh, of our services. However, most of uh, many of our citizens uh, express fears that the data available to public authorities uh, could sometimes be used uh, in a number of negative ways, like leaks, profiling, historical data, exchanges, and cross-referencing of data between public institutions, or maybe sometimes commercial exploitation of data by private partners. Some of the fears that the public or private authorities will identify them, uh, recognize them, and make decisions against them based on this information. So a successful digital transformation for public services will therefore require some kind of a new trust contract, if I may say, between local authorities and citizens. Obviously, we all know that the general data protection regulation is a first step, but it's clearly not enough. And that's why uh, NAND decided to go further with a very uh, dedicated data policy. And I'm very glad to give the floor today to my colleague, uh, Claire Sacho. We will be able to give us an insight of what we are currently doing in NAND. Claire, it's for you. Thank you, Frédéric, for this introduction. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for this invitation to present our experience. Um, I'm very glad to meet you today. My name is Claire Sachot, and I'm working for Nantes, and I'm a chief data officer. Um, so, yes, I'm going to talk about the data charter, and maybe first I can give you some background to tell you how the idea came about. Um, so Nantes uh, has chosen to draw up a data charter because um, it offers ethical principles to protect citizens and to regulate data use. There are a few reasons uh, that led to that approach. Uh, first of all, uh, I can say uh, 10 years of open data work, uh, which gave some maturity to data use and the legal context, and especially the general data protection regulation, of course, which uh, I can say led to an, a greater awareness of the need to regulate and protect data. And uh, there was also uh, the growing awareness of uh, the amount of public data uh, av available in the local authority. And finally, uh, we dialogue a lot with citizens and uh, civil society about digital issues, and it showed an increasing demand for ethical practices, for protection, and for privacy regulations. So Nantes and um, elected officials wanted to ensure that data is used in ways that respect the public interest and deliver trustworthy outcomes. And so the, the charter has two aims, um, establishing a contract of trust, like she said, uh, Frédéric, between administration and users, and regulating the use of data for instance, to avoid uh, commercial exploitation of public services data by, by private partners. Uh, maybe you can move to the next slide, Fred. Uh, <laughs> and <clears throat> these are the values of the Metropolitan Charter, uh, trust and ethics, sobriety, protection, innovation, and transparency. And in the next slide, uh, you can see uh, that there are four commitments in the charter, and I'm going to give you some examples to illustrate this. 
So the, the first commitment is how to guarantee the sovereignty of the local authority over its data. Um, first of all, uh, we try to, well, what, most of our applications are hosted on our servers. And uh, I can give you another example because with uh, the teleworking, we chose a French video conferencing tool, which is Tixeo. I'm sure it's not very famous and maybe you don't know about it, but it's certified and qualified by the French Network and Information Security Agency. So it was in line with our expectation. And um, of course, we want to support this kind of products. But um, this choice, I can say, is becoming more difficult today because uh, we have to find the balance between functionalities and users' experience. And frankly, uh, this video conferencing tool is much less effective than using Zoom, for instance. And the result is shadow IT. Um, commitment number two is uh, protect data. So of course, this is about personal data protection and how to comply with uh, general data protection regulation. Um, you may say this is the least we can do, but it is also about minimal data collection and how to raise people's awareness of the protection of their privacy. And for instance, we try to offer data workshops for young people. Maybe, Frédéric, you can uh, move to the next slide again. Um, and um, we developed a partnership with social cultural centers. Uh, they offer data workshops for young people and a short program to train youth workers. Uh, this is about how to safely surf online, how to recognize sponsored advertising, how to manage your privacy settings on Facebook, for instance, etc. Um, commitment number three is how to ensure tra transparency. Uh, we have an open data portal which was launch, launched uh, 10 years ago and it is shared with three public local organizations. And there are at the moment more than 800 open data sets. Um, and I would like to talk about the fact that the French government introduced a few years ago a new legal framework uh, for algorithmic accountability and tra transparency. So last year, Nantes was the first municipality to publish source code about water and transport pricing policies. Uh, this is uh, quite technical, but the objective is that local citizens can better understand how these tools are, how they operate and the decision making. And commitment number four is about uh, how to promote new uses, because uh, this charter is a protection framework, but it is important to foster innovation as well. So, for instance, we've tested a prototype to develop artificial intelligence capable to reduce food waste in school canteens. Uh, in Nantes, parents uh, can inscribe their children for the canteen the very day, every morning. Uh, this way, they can decide at the last minute if their child will eat at the canteen, and it facilitates the access to the canteen. So our data scientists worked with two startups uh, to combine data from uh, different sources. For instance, weather data, uh, 10 years of data about uh, canteen attendance, religious holidays, etc. And uh, now the number of children going to the canteen can be calculated three or four weeks before. And this in experiment, experimentation, sorry, aims at support employees in their day-to-day -day work. Um, I can also mention that uh, we try to be accountable in data use, and every year a public report is provided to assess the situation and to monitor the implementation of the charter. Um, now I would like also to share with you some what I find difficult. Um, uh, for me, the most important challenge uh, is how to put these guidelines uh, into practice. 
uh, we don't want just uh, make nice pitches, of course. So we try to focus on two actions. Uh, the first one is how to translate these uh, commitments into public contracts. Uh, this is very important. We worked and we are testing a new data clause in our contracts. Uh, like uh, on the picture, you can see the bag share service contract. This is a very interesting way to sensitize and convince both uh, the city staff and the companies. Uh, and it, it is, and it is uh, an occasion to talk about data issues with, uh, with them and ethical practices. Uh, but I can say this is quite difficult as well because it can be seen as uh, causing additional work. And another challenge is uh, that um, we are lucky because uh, um, in that elected uh, officials are very much involved in our data strategy. But the last two years uh, revealed a need, uh, a very strong need to inform, to train, and to raise awareness about the use of data among the different categories of officers in the local community. So we provided workshops for 150 people um, and we would like uh, to carry on. This is uh, one of our objectives. And uh, maybe we, we also have had difficulties to maintain our data local governance these uh, latest 18 months because of the health crisis. Public and private actors are, have uh, problems enough and they are less available. So this is something more difficult at the moment. So this is uh, what I wanted to share with you today. And maybe you have uh, some question to Karen. Thank you very much, Claire. A uh, very comprehensive and inspiring presentation of what the, uh, the city of Nantes is doing a more systematic approach and also reacting to the current challenges. Uh, if any of you have a question, please feel free to raise your hand or simply unmute yourself and just take the floor. I don't see any questions for now. So now I will give the floor to Vienna. Daniela, what the city of Vienna is doing in context of digitalization of public services right now? Yeah, um, hello again. So can you hear me well? Yeah, OK. Um, I would just uh, like to give you a brief overview um, what the city of Vienna um, is planning on the digitalization of public services. Um, it will be. Um, one working group of several working groups, but I will give you um, an information on this, what now uh, is planned. And um, what I can say that we are, for this working group, still in a kind of brainstorming phase. So uh, unfortunately, we are a little bit behind the schedule. So I can give you just um, a general uh, overview, but not so many details at the moment. I hope that we are uh, ha will have to kick off in September or October, and then I will can I can give you more details and update. But um, I would like to present you the main ideas behind uh, this planned um, working group on digitalization. Um, this working group uh, should analyze possible effects um, of the digitalization of public services. And as we all know, uh, the COVID-19 crisis, or but not only uh, during a crisis, um, cities are responsible to maintain the whole system alive in providing high quality public services. And um, we uh, will focus in this uh, working group on digitalization of public services on four areas. Maybe we will add some later on, but at the moment we will focus on these four. This will be the water uh, management, waste management, health and mobility. And um, I have to say that it will not only be a project-based analysis of all the digitalization um, on public services, so what um, project we already done and what we are planning, but it will be more or less an overall approach. So we would to like we would like to analyze um, different business models and legal frameworks, um, also covering um, state aid and public procurement regulations, which are all together with the digitalization of public services. And 
we want to find answers on how digitalization affects the public service mandate of the city of Vienna in providing um, public services. So maybe, you know, um, each city must have the freedom um, to decide as how to manage and deliver public services. For example, in-house by their own departments. Vienna is doing this with uh, waste and water management or by public companies. Uh, for example, in Vienna, we are doing this with the Wiener Stadtwerke uh, by providing mobility services or energy services or, of course, together with private partners. But this must be the decision of, this, of each city. And um, the planned working group is now going to analyze possible risks of privatization of public services due to the digitalization and the risk uh, that cities maybe are no longer able to fulfill their public service mandate in an adequate manner. Um, especially health and mobility data are a critical issue for a city of Vienna. And um, risks could arise, for example, um, because of newly created um, business models like platforms. But of course, the increasing amount of data, where can we store the data in an adequate uh, man manner? And um, do we need for this um, private partners, private cloud solution or private data centers? And um, the question of ownership of data will be a critical one in the future. And so the question is, how can the city of Vienna react to all this development in a smart and suitable way? And uh, we do not only want to focus on risks, but also, of course, on chances and opportunities for the um, digitalization of public services. Yes, so um, to, fulfill, to fulfill this public service mandate in a better way. And um, yes, for the moment, I can I cannot really give you more um, details on this. So this was a, a, a an overview of what we are planning. But um, the city of Vienna is, of course, uh, very interested to exchange um, on this topic with other cities. And uh, we would like, when we are a bit further on this, we would like, of course, to, to share information um, with other cities, what um, they are thinking about these developments. Uh, what, where are you at the moment, do you think? these developments are important for your cities as well, or do you so now at the moment, it's not really on our agenda. And um, probably we will initiate a kind of survey or questionnaire uh, in, don't know, maybe when we're a bit further in October, November, December, and uh, we'll uh, share it with other members um, to have um, to get an idea what other cities are thinking about this topic. And I can give you hopefully then more uh, details um, later on. So thank you for the moment. And I give the floor back to Alexandra. Or maybe there are some questions, I don't know. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Daniela. As we can see, the city of Vienna is not only thinking about how to provide the best the public services, but also how to do it in the new way and also think about the safety and security of the of the citizens. And I think we will be all very interested in the results of this inter-city uh, working group, which will also tackle the four different sectors and areas. So, so thank you very much for this presentation. I don't know if uh, any of you have any question to Daniela. Please feel free to raise your hand, unmute yourself, or put it in the chat box. Um, this lunch debate is about sharing. Uh, we ask some cities to present their cases and examples. Even if you did not volunteer, please feel free to do it. But first, please so think about the experience of your city and the challenges of your city related to the digitalization. And in the meantime, a digitalization of public services, of course. And in the meantime, I will give the floor to Bilbao, to Anne, to present how, what the city is uh, doing currently and what are the plans for the future. Anne, please go ahead. Hello, good evening. My name is Anemirin Ibanez. I work as a managing director of the IT company of Bilbao City Council. Obviously, Bilbao is an advanced city in terms of digitalization. Most services and the most used by citizens are accessible online by mobile phones and apps. As an example, by rental, Bilbao bus app, tax app, etc. The website 
Geo Bilbao and Bilbao Open Data are examples of data transparency and data sharing with citizens and companies. Currently, we are working on a Bilbao data manifesto in a participation model with stakeholders, IT companies, academia, Bilbao city employees, and public institutions. We are defining a framework, a document that establishes an ethical framework associated with the values of Bilbao City and formulates guiding principles for the management and use of data to guide the City Council in the practice of data governance. Technologies are continuously changing and it's very demanding to be learning and implement new technologies continuously to be in the state of the art, but at the main obstacle could be the chain management. New processes, new services require changes in social behavior in both Bilbao City, Bilbao Council employees and citizens. And this sometimes is not easy, but we are work in progress in process, working hard about improving digital skills and showing how our, our quality of life improves thanks to new digital services. In the municipality of Bilbao, we are currently in a process of reflection ahead of the year 2030, a reflections about the model of digital transformation of the city. 2030 Digital Transformation Agenda, which have called Bilbao Digital Agen City or Bilbao Iri Digital in Basque language. This agenda, which we are defining now, we are doing with an strategic, innovative, and transformational vision to generate new opportunities for the city and its citizens. In conclusion, we are thinking about what we want to be regarding to the digitalization in 2030. Everyone is aware that the digital transformation is right now, along with the social transformation and ecological transition, one of the main changes we are experiencing, especially after the situation generated by the pandemic. We understand the digital transformation as a lever of change and activation of new opportunities, such as new models of relationship, new products and new services to help citizens, to help in general to the whole city to have a new economical and social impulse. Digitalization is present more and more in all areas of life new models of relation between people, social networks, WhatsApp, new models of product marketing, new models of online payments as we soon, new models of relating with the public administration, new users' experiences and usability models. There are many examples in which digitalization is a transformative lever and the results in improvements in the quality of life and in the business models. Therefore, we understand digital transformation as the adopting of digital technologies in all areas of society, not exclusively in the service that the administration provides to citizens. We want to use digitalization as an activating lever that with the support and collaboration of the rest of entities and social agents of the cities, citizens, companies, universities, technology centers, and other public administrations help to make a quantity and a quality lead in order to maintain and improve the quality of life, the development level, and the well being of the citizens of Bilbao and visitors. It represents a competitive challenge for the city for two reasons. It's the direct economic impact as a digital and technological sector, a sector that attracts companies, generates investment, attracts talent, creates new businesses, new startups, etc. In addition to its important contribution in a transversal way to the competitiveness of the rest of the economic sectors. Today, digitalization affects all economic and social sectors. We have a big challenge ahead. We are at the beginning of this plan, but we are convinced that it will be good for the tech, tech sector, for the innovation in the city, and for the development and improvement of the quality of life of citizens. Thank you. 
Thanks a lot. I'm interesting to see how Bilbao is addressing this uh, challenge with a very cross-cutting transversal approach to cover opportunities and challenges. Thanks again. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have uh, any other volunteer who would like to share the experience of his her city in context of digitalization of public services? Mm, as I can see, the crowd is rather silent. We also have a plan B with the more digital approach. So we will ask you now, uh, I, and apologize because I've forgotten to introduce Claudia. Claudia is working with uh, me in your cities. Uh, Claudia, how we can share the experiences via which tool? Um, we've created a whiteboard, which I'm going to send the link through the chat. And you can access it and you will have several questions there so it would be nice if you could contribute with your an answers um i will also share the the screen once you're finished and yeah we really encourage you to to participate and and give your your feedback and your insights uh taking into account your your own experiences and i just want to add one thing the, the, the thematic to the digitalization of public services is very broad and wide so there is no right or wrong approach or angle uh, my colleague told us about the data charter uh, bilbao is doing a very transversal approach but it could be also very concrete measures that you are setting in your cities and just to identify where you decide to focus on that will be yeah, yeah there is no wrong or right approach obviously or maybe also interesting where do you store your data do you have um, uh, your own servers or data centers or do you use cloud uh, services um, all, all this would be quite interesting how you're dealing with this kind of digitalization so feel free to use the board <laughs> We don't have plan C guys. So this is this is the space for you to contribute. So it's really easy to, to use. So if you want to to contribute, you just have to click the on the left side the sticky note and you can just write uh, whatever answer you would like to share with us. Or maybe you can uh, where the where digitalization could bring some advantages to your city. So what's what could be positive effects on digitalization, or maybe what kind of risks do have you identify or uh, identified, or maybe you you would see. Um, so you could put everything we are thinking on on the whiteboard. With the challenges that you face, I, I mean, uh, we uh, from the presentation that was presented by uh, Vienna, we see that the big challenge is uh, the security of the of the of the of the uh, citizens' rights and data. So this is definitely uh, one thing: the mandate of which the city actually has to um, to work on the digitalization, and also how we can make it efficient and also legal, working on legal framework related to the um to the cooperation with public and private sector i'm looking at my colleague ludwig from our knowledge society forum hello ludwig maybe you can have some sharing sharing part sharing feeling with us related to the theme that we are having today uh hi alex of course thank you very much for uh for inviting me on the floor um it's been very interesting and um and also very uh, motivating to to hear the contributions so far 
And within the Knowledge Society Forum, we have a, a working group on, on, uh, on data, which specifically um, uh, works on the topic of, of data, so to say. Um, and it, um, yeah, it coincides with a lot, uh, um, a lot of things that have been mentioned here, um, and also um, both the challenges, the opportunities, and the actions that you're undertaking to, uh, to make the most of data, so to say. Um, so that's uh, that's cool to see. Uh, for these, uh, for what we see in the in the discussions within our data working group um, currently, um, and also in the recent past, um, is about uh, not only about open data, uh, but also about um, getting access to and sharing um, data that is proprietary. So for cities to be able to get access to data um, that is held either by academic uh, institutions or by other public bodies or by businesses. Um, and how to combine this data with uh, existing data in um, and in possession of um, of uh, the cities themselves, um, and it would be in addition to the open data um, that is uh, of the data that has been opened or has been opened by uh, by cities so far already, with the idea of of having as much data as possible will will facilitate as much innovation or new services or improved uh, public services uh, in the future. Um, but also, this is also a pitfall for the working group on data, is that it is only about uh, data, so to say. So it's good to have a, a specific angle. Um, but here it is about uh, the digitalization of public services in general. Um, and I'd be very interested to hear um, about technologies or uh, solutions or, or paths of inquiry uh, that you're undertaking um, for digitalization of public services in a, in a broader perspective. So maybe you're using augmented reality to uh, create uh, interactive maps of your cities um, maybe uh, you're using AI to um, to uh, automate um, um, processes in your um, in your uh, municipalities or maybe you use chatbots and other digital ways of interacting with uh, with uh, your citizens to provide services um, it, this is for me this is really interesting as so far I've really been well been fed the, the data perspective and I think digitalization is uh, is much more than that so be very curious to hear about that as well. Maybe we can ask uh, Claire about uh, the experience in Nantes related because you mentioned in your presentation the uh, platform, the French local platform that you are using uh, as a sub substitute to Zoom. But what are do you have other technological solutions related to the digitalization of public services that you tested or maybe also you are supporting the local startups to access to uh, answer to the needs uh, to the cities uh, of the citizens and the public services. Claire? Um, yes, maybe I can tell we have um, we're working uh, on our e-services platform, which is a uh, very important topic at the moment, uh, because this is a, a very concrete way to um, give a service uh, to citizens, to users. Um, as I said, we are testing AI, uh, which is very new because uh, uh, this could be frightening for some people uh, and especially for our staff. So this is a, a way to uh, show what it can provide for public services, something very concrete. This is why we tested it um, uh, about uh, school canteens because uh, it is a way to show very pragmatic uh, outcomes. Um, well, we designed a new open data portal and uh, uh, this is very important, but I would say this is not the only uh, way or the only topic in our data strategy. It's one level, uh, one uh, uh, something important, but uh, not the only one. Um, and we have um, an application which is called uh, Not in My Pocket. And uh, we worked a lot the, these last years because uh, uh, it gives uh, very daily services for, for users. And it was a very important way uh, in the, the municipality to work about uh, digitalization and how to uh, get better, improve our uh, open data, uh, how to improve our process, etc. So this is what I can say, I think, for now. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, I'm very interested in the idea of creating a local digital council. Uh, is the person who put it on the board uh, still with us? And if yes, is it just the idea of, uh, of the representative of the city or is it already something in the pipeline of one of, uh, of our members? Yeah, hello. I, I put uh, this, uh, this topic on the table. Uh, I'm Bruno Gourdon from the city of Angers near Nantes. And uh, so it's uh, it's just an idea at the moment in Angers uh, to, to create some kind of uh, um, council to, to to bring citizens with other uh, local stakeholders to um, uh, to 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 talk about this uh, this uh, matters. So I would like uh, to to know if uh, if uh, other cities have uh, put this uh, this kind of uh, of council in, in place at the moment, or is it uh, an idea that uh, that they have? Thank you. Thank you very much. I do not see the reaction, but I'm for sure if you will hear about it, we will also put you in contact with the representative of the city. I'm looking at Lodwig and also I noted that if we'll hear about this idea uh, coming up from other our members, we will do it. But definitely something that uh, is interesting and also with the new approach to the participation and participatory approach of the cooperation with citizens, definitely something that uh, might be we're not only working, but could be scale up for sure. Um, I see also other contributions. May, may I ask uh, the representative of City of Lisbon to tell us a bit more about this open innovation acceleration programs? Ah, hello. Uh, <laughs> I'm here. I was writing some something else. Yes. Well, we have we have been working on uh, Lisbon ecosystem for for a while. And um, developing these programs to to um, to attract um, um, startups to work with us, we are not doing that by ourselves. Uh, they are open innovation partnership programs that we sponsor, and then we have also other um, state-owned companies or other other partners uh, from the private sector that are also interested in the, in this in these kind of uh, solutions. So we are um, attracting, and and then we of course uh, offer. Uh, good conditions to, to to testing and prototyping the solutions for for mobility and other 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 um, uh, focus areas. But in the next years, we are going to do something. We're trying we're trying to do something different. We will work on digitization of a public procurement them further, uh, and uh, we want to do open innovation for public procurement. So we we want to do. For for um, sustainability uh, public procurement um, decisions that we are taking, we have a program for three years that it will start now. Uh, we are we are uh, identifying areas that we need um, uh, further innovation from from the from the 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 corporate sector, and also from the universities and startups. So we are going to to try to to set for next year open innovation for public public procurement. Uh, needs that we have and start verticalizing the, those those processes and then uh, trying to do the change of our of, of our uh, way to buy um, of course with concerns of, of local suppliers development but looking for short you know sh short distance supply uh, circularity um, even looking for solutions for for logistics for small and medium enterprises so trying to to attract companies that can 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 have uh, solutions that we, we can change deeply our our way to to buy because we have sustainability issues that we want to tackle. Um, I don't know if you want to further, <laughs> but this is one of uh, our focus. It sounds really interesting. And yeah. if uh, I already have you at the microphone, if you can also uh, elaborate a bit more on the second experience that you put it on the board, in-house factory for digital ah, services, yes. because yes. it's a bit of the fab city approach, test bed innovation. Yes. So I'm really interested in this part. So what we we have done, we have we have uh, we have a partner. Well, we 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 have a company that is out systems uh, it's 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 um, a portuguese uh, uh, 
born company, but it's, it's, a, it's a unicorn. It's a big, big company right now. And they are specialized in fast development of uh, workflows and apps. Uh, so we have bought all the licensing for that tool. We also invested in our own resources to to build some 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 of the of, of these tools. Some we used in the in the COVID impact. We had to quickly uh, arrange all you know, catalogs to control uh, materials, uh, clinical uh, materials, and so on. So we have quickly developed under these frameworks because it's very easy to 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 do that. So um, we are doing using this platform for everything, for mobility services, for you know uh, everything that is related with workflows. Uh, and also they have the integration layer with the, our, our SAP. Uh, so we use SAP for financial resources. Uh, at the moment, we are also developing, uh, you know, connections uh, between between people that are, you know, everywhere in schools and, and so on and so on. And we are developing uh, um, easy, easy to use frameworks, digitalization frameworks that are in uh, the, the developer under uh, our systems tool. And then they connect with SAP, so we don't need people to 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 have to access to to SAP to you know uh, more more uh, difficult interactions. <laughs> we may say this politely, but it's, it's it's that we are we are we are using also this as a as a way to 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 ergonomically uh, build something that is user friendly for 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 our services. So we 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 have this strong agreement with this company with with all systems, and we have good news because we are also helping the government to build the framework agreements that will be set now uh, for next and will be uh, next year if we open. So every company that uh, can develop uh, under all systems will be qualified by the government uh, for every every single uh, procurement uh, organization, including municipalities. Uh, so we can easily go to the framework agreement and buy services for quick development of of, of uh, other other uh, opportunities. So we don't um, we we hope to accelerate even even more the use of this technology that is uh, very important. So we use also SharePoint. So, so if you want to know, we also use uh, Microsoft 365 uh, so, uh, and the suite uh, uh, in SharePoint Online. And we are also doing um, a strong developments in, in, in SharePoint, but more concerned about um, knowledge management, internal knowledge man management, and also deployment of um, training uh, materials for, for, for several areas. So this. Well, it's a lot, but <laughs> sorry for this. But is it, these are our main choices of technology. And then, of course, we are also attracting other apps and tools. But we are concerned with everything that was discussed today uh, concerning data protection and so on. And uh, we are really uh, we're going to do something very, very close to, for um, what was uh, here um, presented by Bilbao, uh, by Vienna, and, and also by Nant. Uh, we, we really, I have my notes here, we have to do something stronger about tractor protection and uh, we are we are sh sure going to, to advise internally so we can do something similar that for, for what was presented by, by other cities. I think it's very important right now. No, it's it's really uh, super interesting to to hear what you are saying, and also um, the last two days it was the research and innovation days, which was hosted by DGRTD, we uh, during which we were had the chance to launch the European partnerships and also cooperation between the, of course, researchers, academia, cities and the unicorns, like being a hub for the unicorns at the European Union. Uh, I know that Claudia is making the notes and also having some questions, so now I will give the mic to Claudia. Hello, yes, I was wondering if um, any of you would be interested in serving um, some questions that our our participants have been posting on the whiteboard. For instance, Joanna from the city of Stockholm, she's explained that she would be interested in hearing other experiences of open data since they usually struggle with the lack of structure, low quality of and low quality of and technical constraints. So if any of you has any experience in their own city or they've been dealing with this issue, it would probably be a really good idea to share it now um, with the rest of us. Ludwig?
Yeah, so if I if I may come in, um, uh, Stockholm. So um, uh, Johanna, I think this is um, maybe a good question that you could also or that we could also share within the community of the working group on data that we have within the KSF. Um, it's um, it's maybe an ideal question to also post on the, on the collaboration platform. There are many cities that are uh, working um, with local data platforms. Um, and basically the first step for many of these cities, um, I'm mentioning Rennes, um, but also Amsterdam and Rotterdam, um, there's Hamburg, there's Cologne, just to mention a few, um, that have been, yeah, that have been yeah, steadily progressing this open data sharing over the past years and that are now looking into integrating even um, other sources of data there as well. So I assume that they um, might have some interesting uh, experiences and, and helpful experiences for you to share with as well. Uh, hopefully uh, common solutions even to uh, to uh, to re reuse. Um, so if you want me to help uh, to help out with uh, yeah with uh, with reaching out to the data working group, um, you can drop me a line. Um, and I'll put my email address in the in the chat as well, or you can also um, do that through uh, through Alexandra, whatever you uh, whatever you prefer. That sounds good. Thank you. I was just so uh, curious about uh, because our ex experience in Stockholm is that the uh, we all we don't all we don't always meet the expectations of the public and the companies. And it's sometimes uh, due to technical constraints and it's sometimes due to other things that we really don't feel that are so easily fixed, more of the structural and legal and juridical and uh, other aspects. And I was wondering if you're also dealing with this kind of gap between the, <laughs> the expectation and the hope and the vision and what you can actually deliver in practice. So I would be really interested in hearing more about that. Uh, we, we'll keep in touch. Claudia? Yes, so um, I think that it would be a good option to move to the next question now. Um, if anyone wants to comment anything else on this one, of course, uh, feel free to do so. I cannot see any of you, so Alexandra, if you can let me know if someone wants yes, to. Yes, of course. Uh, I see, I don't know, Ludwig, if you have uh, again uh, the contribution, so I will give the floor to Ludwig and then we'll move to a second board. Okay. <laughs> I'll keep it short. <laughs> no, it's just that I see some uh, mentioning of data sharing here as well on this on the on the canvas and um, access to it and um, well reusing it and the, the using of data um, as an important pillar for digitalizing public services. Um, the uh, KSF, so the Knowledge Society Forum, is currently working on its uh, policy um, statement for uh, the policy paper for the Data Act, which is um, a legislative proposal by the Commission. Um, expected in the last quarter of this year um, and among other things it should facilitate the sharing of um, uh, data from businesses towards uh, governments um, and we're making that a collaborative effort the policy statement um, and the first version is uh, currently under review by for, for all KSF members um, and I think for those that are interested here and I hear um, chief digital officers and I see all these digital and technical people here uh, gathered and um, so we would be very interested to hear your uh, reflection on the on the paper as well. Um, so if you'd be interested to collaborate, contribute, read it, uh, give your reflections, then um, I can give you access to it um, or we can just give everybody access in this call to it and then you get um, get a message that you can reply to it if you're interested and it would help us progress our uh, euro cities network statement uh, and position towards the data act from the commission later this year thank you ludwig and uh, i will be uh, also um, interested if all of you has uh, access to our collaboration platform uh, if you have it, you can clap using the uh, the uh, space in Teams because as uh, our colleague from Lisbon mentioned, there is a SharePoint uh, with exchanging between the the, 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 the the stakeholders. We have also the new platform in your cities, the collaboration platform. If you do not have yet the access, that's the space in which you can share the experiences, ask those questions, uh, share your input related to the policy statements. I will soon put the uh, information how to get the access uh, in the chat. Uh, all of you should in, in, 
have already um, received the email, but uh, I mean, it was a bit a long time ago, so we are more than happy to uh, help you again. And one last thing from Ludwig, maybe not the last, but maybe one more uh, worth mentioning is that our colleagues are also ahead of preparation of the Knowledge Society Forum. Is it correct, my dear? And when it will be and what will be the forum? Definitely, we have the Knowledge Society Forum event by the end of September, so the 21st until the 24th, if I'm correct. Um, and there's information on that on the collaboration platform as well. Um, and it's uh, the, the theme or the topic is uh, Citizens in a Data World. Um, it's hosted by Rennes, um, a French city, uh, the capital of Brit uh, uh, Brittany. Um, and they are working on a local data platform as well. And this is actually the starting point of, uh, of the entire event. It's about um, using and sharing different sources of data within local, uh, local communities and ecosystems and how to uh, create um, and foster stronger uh, engagements with, uh, this, with citizens uh, through such uh, solutions as well. And we have a three day program and you're all invited. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if uh, maybe Daniela or Frederic would like to say a bit uh, more or comment on this board, or are we moving forward to the second one? Um, Claire, maybe, Claire uh, of course. Yeah, maybe just uh, about uh, Joanna's question uh, on open data, I would just like to share our experience and to say that in the past, we uh, share a lot of data in different topics. And I think it is very difficult to carry on like that. And now I think we're going to focus on one or two topics so that we can work on quality, data quality, uh, technical constraint, uh, um, and uh, internal process. And uh, this is uh, the answer we try to focus on and um, so that we can uh, give uh, better results and have uh, better collaboration with uh, private and public uh, actors. Uh, so, so I'm not really um, the technical uh, expert on data, but um, you can, of course, uh, write me an email and I will try to answer this or get the information from our CIO or other uh, persons involved. So I think that would be the best way then. <laughs> well, thank you very much. It was very interesting to hear even that. Frédéric? Um, I'm okay. I don't have much to add compared to what Claire just said. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, Claudia, I give you the floor. Yes, I don't know if you had the chance to read the concept note that we created for this uh, lunch break, but in that note, we explained that the European Commission issues the e government benchmark report every year, which, as you can see, uh, it aims at assessing the development carried out by member states in terms of digitalization of public services. So uh, the main indicators that are used to assess uh, the development of our member states are basically these ones, user centricity, transparency, key enablers and cross-border mobility. So in this in these senses, uh, could you please give us examples or like could you explain some experiences uh, in the main developments carried out in these areas on the one hand? And on the other hand, challenges, the challenges that you usually face in these specific areas. It would be really nice to, to share these experiences because maybe we can give some ideas to, to some of our colleagues. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And there are two ways. I know which one will be more popular, but you can unmute yourself and share it with us uh, via audio or you can put it on the whiteboard.
Alexandra Korodia, I'm wondering if it's not like a, <laughs> a question with not inspiring many members. So I don't see anyone writing down or but maybe I'm wrong. We can't hear you, Alexandra. <laughs> oh my god, can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. After one year, it's still a challenge. Um noted, and uh, we will still um update you about the development of this report but maybe we will not to force you to contribute luckily with us is our last but not your least speaker from today Carl Philippe hello 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 Alexandra hi how are you I'm good I'm good perfect Carl would you mind to start your presentation already and share your screen yes of course oops um... Something went wrong here. Oh. Do you see my presentation? Because we I see the presentation, but it's not in the uh, slideshow mood, mode. And mood okay. probably as well. I'll try again. It's also a struggle for me after one year still. Um, Okay, I'll do it like this. It's fine. <clears throat> I can't see it myself. It's uh. But we see the slides, uh, not in the yeah. slideshow mode, but it's fine, so you can start. Yes. The typical uh, Microsoft Teams problem. Well, I. Um, just to present myself, my name is Karl Philippe Kunegracht. I work on the project Uses Century Cities on behalf of Euro Cities. And um, actually, it doesn't surprise me that there was uh, there were no comments on the last question. And I will try to um, um, tell you a little bit why I'm not surprised. Uses Century Cities is a, a Horizon 2020 funded project that was started in December 2020. Um, and um, it's a project with a nice consortium that is led by the Lisbon Council on Economic Competitiveness um, with partners uh, Eurocities, uh, Rotterdam Municipality, VTT, consultants from Finland, uh, ESPO Municipality, Tallinn, Milan, Murcia and Emilia Romagna. So quite a lot of Eurocities members are um, in this consortium. Um, the project user centric cities is about user centricity and cities, so it's uh, quite obvious what the title stands for. And just to give you um, a little bit of background on uh, the Tallinn Declaration, uh, the Tallinn Declaration follows the Malmö Declaration on e-government of 2009. The Tallinn Declaration itself was um, agreed upon by the um, the member states uh, in 2017. Uh, in the meantime, there was also the e-government action plan of 2016 to 2020. And uh, in those declarations, the ministers of uh, the European Union recognize that a service-oriented, reliable and innovative government at all levels is essential to develop a dynamic, productive and European society. Um, the Tallinn, in the Tallinn declaration, um, uh, that follows the Malmö Declaration. It continues to invest in accelerating the modernization of the public sector uh, in the European Union. And uh, actually, this project is about a very important annex uh, to the Tallinn Declaration. Uh, and this uh, annex um, contains eight user centricity principles. And those user centricity principles recognize the needs and the expectations of citizens and businesses as they interact with public administrations and they commit to designing and deliver, uh, delivering uh, their services guided by the principles of user centricity. So there are eight user centricity principles that are in this de declaration. Uh, I'm not going to read them out loud, uh, but you can see uh, one is on having the option uh, with regards to uh, public services of digital interaction. There's one on accessibility, security, uh, findability, 
uh, and uh, non-discriminatory uh, access to public services. Um, uh, the, I'm sorry to, uh, reduction of. I'm sorry to interrupt. I think I don't you, are, know. Uh, you should uh, change the slides because we are still uh, seeing only the number one slides. Yes. Okay. okay. That's what I. That's what I was afraid of. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing and try again. Still the same problem, I'm afraid. It's okay. We actually see. No, it was okay. We were seeing your your slide. Yes, Matt, but I'm I'm probably going to have the same problem that I won't be able to switch the slides. Uh, you can send it first to me and I will share the screen and you can continue talking and uh, I will share the screen in the meantime. OK, let me do some multitasking. Uh, OK, here it comes. So there are eight user centricity uh, principles in the declaration, as I said, uh, and they're not only about um, digital interaction, also simplification of administrative burden. Uh, the fact that um, evidence and um, the uh, delivery of those services can be done fully online uh, with a possibility for citizens and businesses to check the progress of service delivery. There's a, a principle about um, citizen engagement, that citizens are involved in the ideas for, for policies and public services. Uh, there's one principle on control of data, informing citizens about how they are used and allowing them to correct the data uh, in a GDPR compliant way. And uh, an eighth principle about uh, the uh, availability of a redress and complaint mechanism a mechanism uh, online. Um, I'm going to wait for the presentation to be in Alexandra's mailbox so that you can see it because otherwise the effect of the presentation will be gone. Almost there. Okay. Is it working now? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Next slide. And the next one. So there's, there are a couple of. Now you're going through the presentation too fast. <laughs> there are actually a couple. Of, no. Uh, yes, that's okay. This one. The uh, um, one slide back, please. Yes. So there are actually a couple of problems with this um, Tallinn Declaration and its user centricity principles. Uh, it was uh, agreed upon by the uh, national governments. So there's a lack of adoption at the local level. So you can see a lot of initiatives at the national levels. For instance, the once only principle is one of the user centricity principles in this Tallinn Declaration. Uh, but there's no adoption or a lack of adoption at the local level. The local authorities were not even involved in defining the Stalin Declaration. There's also an impossibility to compare the performance of local authorities in digital government. And that's what, uh, that's what I meant when, when I said that I was not surprised that there were no comments on the last question uh, in the discussion, because in the e-government uh, monitor, uh, local authorities were not involved and all the indicators that are uh, in the e-government monitor are um, related to the national levels. There's also a lack of support on, to, on how to become more user-centric. There, there are no tools available, uh, especially not uh, at the local level. Next slide, please. And you can click three times. Yes, thank you. So um, this project, user centricities, is about uh, three th uh, things. First of all, um, and uh, in this stage we are now, there's a needs assessment uh, that is being done. Uh, in the first place, translating the Tallinn Declaration principles, 
into operational local recommendations. So actually we did a local translation of those user centricity principles. What do they, what do they mean for the local level? And what does the local level cities need in order to work with those principles? Secondly, uh, existing approaches, especially in uh, measuring user centricity at the local level and tools that have been applied, uh, especially uh, in the, the partner cities and the consortium have been collected and have been analyzed. And uh, this is the basis for the next step, creating a benchmark, uh, creating a benchmark, a dashboard actually, to compare the performance of cities on user centricity using a combination of not only quantitative information, but also qualitative uh, context so that everybody can uh, measure uh, his performance uh, in terms of user centricity uh, also in this uh, publicly available dashboard. Uh, secondly, uh, when creating a dashboard, also an analysis will be done on uh, all the data that has been fed into the dashboards and uh, a reporting to the European Commission uh, based on that information. And uh, this will uh, eventually uh, evolve into a tool to measure user centricity at the local level in a more effective way and give more input also for uh, the e-government uh, monitor that uh, is, is being used by uh, the European Union. The third work, work package is about uh, developing concrete tools. So um, there will be interactive peer-to-peer -peer workshops organized uh, uh, with the cities in, in the consortium, but also with other cities outside of the consortium. Uh, there will be a toolkit developed uh, on user-centric services, and uh, this will specifically be a, a service design toolkits that everybody will be able to use uh, that uh, will want to work with um, uh, the principles of user-centricity. And an online, online repository of good practices will also be one of the results. And then there's a fourth, uh, fourth work package, which is especially relevant to EuroCities, uh, community building. We want to create a community that will live on beyond the 30 months that this project will uh, run uh, on user-centricity, on service design, uh, especially related to digital public services. And there's also uh, there's already a collaboration with several EuroCities working groups uh, within the KSF, the Digital Citizen Working Group and the Urban Digital Foresight uh, Working Group and the Creative Citizenship Working Group. Um, and um, in this community building, we also want to share learnings, uh, do's and don'ts on uh, designing and co-designing uh, digital public services through workshops to peer-to-peer -to -peer, uh, related activities and so on. And uh, also quite important uh, for EuroCities, we will organize uh, awards, uh, awards on the uh, best um, uh, user-centric public services uh, in European cities and regions, I should, uh, should say. Um, and uh, also uh, we want to scale the impact of uh, the project uh, by uh, delivering a series of uh, policy briefs, by delivering uh, articles and uh, organize high level events. Next slide, please. So what's in it for the working group public services? Uh, as I have said, uh, in our strategy, in our uh, scaling up strategy and communication strategy, the, the uh, mentioned EuroCities working groups already have a very important place. Uh, for this specific and new uh, working group, a better understanding of digital public services uh, is, I think, uh, an advantage. So what are digital uh, services? What are user-centric digital services? How to design, how to co-design uh, digital public services? What are the good practices uh, around Europe? Why should you design, co-design user-centric services? What are the advantages, uh, advantage, advantages, and so on. Uh, there's also, of course, a support system uh, in place with all the cities that are part of user-centric cities. Uh, the cities that are in the consortium have proven to be front runners in co-designing digital public services, and they have already shared a lot of good practices uh, that can be used. And also the experts in the cities are prepared to share their experiences share their tools, share their platforms. 
and you will have access to the resources to build and improve digital public services. Uh, the toolkit will be in place. There will be a set of indicators that you can use also at the local level. The repository will contain all the good uh, and best practices uh, and the learnings um, are on the website. And of course, you will also be able to share good practices. So at this moment, there's not only uh, the group of, of core cities uh, that are involved in the project. There are, there's also a group of um, associate cities. So for instance, uh, Lisbon, uh, Barcelona, Nantes uh, and other cities have joined the project. Uh, and uh, then there's also the three working groups. And we're hoping to have also this working group on public services on board uh, at the least and uh, hopefully also a couple of the participating cities in this working group. So that's it for me. I hope this is enough promotion for this project, but uh, it is proving to be a very interesting one. Many thanks for this uh, introduction to this project, and I'm sure many cities might be interested in at least following it or maybe contributing uh, to your work. Thanks for that. If anyone Thank has any much, Carl, and we managed with the synchronization, so I'm very happy to also that we managed with the technical challenges. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and uh, now it's the time to wrap up and to make some conclusions. Is the dessert or the coffee, depending on what you prefer during your lunch break. And we also ask you to contribute uh, and ask some questions on the Slido. Please feel free to access it. Claudia will share the screen to present the answers now. And I give the floor to Frédéric to the final remarks. Thank you. Thanks, Alexandra. Um, so we saw today during this land break that it's a very wide and broad topic. Maybe a food for thought for next time to to narrow down a bit uh, on a specific topic because we see, for instance, on data that no matter how far you are on your process, there is still some recurrent question like uh, the matter of collection and improving the quality, the protection, the data protection, and the sharing. And we saw that some projects are going on in different cities. We also saw that we have a, um, some potential interest in the KSF forum uh, in September in Rennes, uh, and it's open to every member of this working group, so do not hesitate to, to register, and we can send you the information uh, about it as well. Uh, by fall, we might have also a survey to contribute uh, based on Vienna's uh, on, ongoing work which is really interesting and a very broad approach about the consequences of the digitalization of public services. And other cities are already very involved in adopting a very global approach on this matter with Bilbao and Lisbon showing us what can be done with, with an agenda by 2030 or with a very innovation focused matters. Um, also, one original idea that I noticed uh, among other one is the one from Angers with the local digital council uh, thought, let's say, ID. Um, and just what we have as a presentation is a user centric project, uh, which, uh, yes, might be an opportunity to, to contribute on a very specific matter with the user centric angle. Um, I would be interesting if we could have the result of the survey regarding the broad. Uh, working group activities proposal that we did at the beginning, please, just to see if there is any very strong interest in one or another one. Uh, if we have, off if we have to to endure. Okay. So one hundred percent. So that's quite a relief for people being there today. <laughs> so we definitely gonna have to to dig more in that topic and probably try to come back with you with a more a specific angle to to go deeper in that matters and not really okay uh, in your opinion your city received enough support from the institution to go through this process of digitalization not really so clearly there is a message to send back to the EU institution or maybe try to organize an event with some representative to to exchange with them with about the needs and the challenge that we are facing with that 
which type of support do you expect from the EU? So as much as possible financial and advisory. So yes, definitely we can work on that with an event and conveying, inviting the commission. And are citizens taking full advantage of the digitalization of your public services? You are quite unanimous when it comes to some extent, meaning there is probably some work to be done. And the topic that we did not address today, which is maybe the um, digital divide, which could be also an angle that uh, we did not address, but um, obviously there is still work to do. So we are on the right topic to, to work on. I don't know, yeah. And which are, in your opinion, the main reasons that are keeping citizens from taking advantage of the digitalization of public services, lack of knowledge or expertise? So once again, digital divide might be a topic of interest, but if anyone has something to add, I would be glad to, to hear if there is other matters. Um, I don't know if some of you have already some specific policy when it comes to digital divide that you want to very quickly share before we wrap up this session. Oh, Daniela, if you have something to add, or oh, Alexandra, please feel free. No, I just also took a look uh, into the results of the survey related to the future activities of the working group. Yeah. And the biggest interest was to work um, to organize the event uh, focus on the moving toward the path to the pledge for the principal 20 uh, of the European Pillar of Social Rights, but also uh, there is an interest related to the cooperation um, focused on the uh, investment and uh, financing the public services. Okay, so basically you're telling me that the three proposals are of interest for the members today. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, if anyone has any comment or would like to add something, please feel Free. even just to express some matters or questions that you would like to, to see uh, uh, treated in this working group in the next activities that will be helpful for for your city's team and Daniela and myself because the point is trying to provide you with event and works that uh, could help you on your daily missions so feel free. No, I I cannot see the um, the raise hands. We will also share with you a recording from our webinar, and we also will kick off the discussion at the collaboration platform. So feel free to to link with us. We will also in the follow up email share with you the policy statement mentioned by Ludwig, and uh, so you will also have the chance to contribute uh, via the platform. Thank you, Alexandra. Well, if there is no comments, then I would like to thank you uh, in everyone to, to, to attend to this webinar today. And I wish you a great afternoon and hopefully see you soon in person or maybe in digital. We will see how it goes in the coming months. And if I don't have any news from you before that, have all a great summer break. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Thanks. Thank you very much. See you. Bye. Bye bye. I will stop the recording now.